On today's episode, I'll show you how to get a near-perfect first layer on a very intricate design like this round breadboard I created. And I'll show you how to do it on an A1 or A1 Mini with a relatively hidden Z offset setting. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In a previous video, I showed you how I could 3D print my own breadboard for electronics because I found these clips that snap right into the back of the slots of the 3D printed breadboard. I printed it upside down with the slots upwards so I wouldn't have to use any supports. And then I could snap in the clips. Well, I put the clips on the circuit board first, and then I put the 3D print over the top of it and snapped it in place. And this created my own development board for little 8-pin microcontrollers. I've been wanting to make a round breadboard so I could build round projects like this, such as a scrolling LED. But I can't find them anywhere, so I decided to make my own in Tinkercad. I started with the little element that I used to make the breadboards before, and I made two of them. Basically, I duplicated it. And if I flip it upside down, you can see the grooves, and this is the way I'm going to build it. So again, I duplicated it, plus I made blocks or holes that were the same size. Now I'm going to separate those holes from the breadboard elements. And what I want to do is make a 360-degree version with just holes. So what I did is I duplicated just the holes, and then I turned the first one minus 5 degrees. So I got minus 5 degrees, and then all I have to do is hit the duplicate button over and over again to make this thing a full 360 degrees. So I'll have holes every 5 degrees ready to insert the breadboard pieces in place. So once I've got all those holes created, I'm going to slide the element to the side here because I don't need it right now. And I'm going to group all these holes together as one piece or one group. Then I'll slide in a disc the same height that I want, and this is a slightly larger diameter. It's 136 millimeters in diameter, and then what I need to do is center the holes into this disc. So I grab them both, I use the centering tool, and I center both X and Y. And then once I group these together, I'll have a circle with slots ready to insert the breadboard pieces. Now I'll grab the group together breadboard elements and I'm just going to center it to the disc and it's automatically going to go into that first slot. And I'll just grab just the breadboard pieces and I'm going to rotate those five degrees just like I did with the holes. That way everything lines up. So I'll turn it minus five degrees. Wrong direction. Okay, minus five degrees. And then I'm going to hit duplicate over and over again until I get all the holes filled. So again, 360 degrees, but now the breadboard piece is in place inside this big disc. And then once I group this together, I should have the guts of my breadboard. So I'll group it together. And there it is. This is the breadboard. And you can see we're on the bottom looking at the bottom side. If I flip this over, you can see the top. It looks like a breadboard. I realized that this is bigger than what I wanted, so I made a copy of it, and then I actually just cut the center of this thing out. So I had a single row on the outside, and then I put more sockets in the center for like integrated circuits or Arduino Nano or something, plus power and ground strips. And this is the one I'm going to try to print. So I wanted to print this on my A1 Mini, and I'm going to use some PLA filament from Polar Filament called Candy Red. We're talking about maybe making this a official Filament Friday filament. So I brought the design in to Bamboo Studio, flipped it upside down so the slots are going up, so therefore no supports. And then I'm just going to use the P basic PLA settings with a texture PEI plate at a 0.2 layer height. And so I sliced this, but I didn't like what I saw. If you notice on the first layer, there's no lines. There's no crosses, there's no slots where you would stick the wires. So it's not drawing those or it's erasing them in the slice. So I clicked on detect thin wall to see if this would fix the problem. And that helped because now I'm seeing the lines here on all the different sections. So now I can print this and see how it goes. Now I was a little concerned. I saw these spots where the lines didn't go all the way into the wall, not only here, but on the outer ring as well. So that's a little bit of a concern, but I'm still going to print this and see how it turns out. 
and this is the result. It just wasn't sticking to the bed good enough. So I decided to use the BQ Cryo Grip that I have for this machine because that thing grips really well. And it did a little better in spots and worse in others. So there was something else going on here. I decided to try this on another printer. I do have a Bamboo Lab P1S, so I could use the same slicer and everything. And this thing usually prints pretty good, but I do have a cryo grip bed material in this as well because I print a lot of small stuff, and this thing works well for that. Well, the print came out a lot better. The first layer looked really good. And I was happy with this, so I knew there was something wrong with the A1 Mini. But then when I looked closer, I could see that it really wasn't sticking that well either. I mean, these holes look pretty rough. So I decided to print another one. Maybe it was just a bad print, and sure enough, it was the same thing. So I'm still not happy with the results here, but this is a lot better. The slots look really good, so I'm going to use this as a first prototype to test out the clips, and the clips are snapping in great. So I may just build a circuit with this while the Mini is actually printing. So back to the Mini, I decided to try a few more settings. Under the Quality tab, and I've showed this on the channel before, the initial layer is set to 0.5, which is smaller than the default. So I decided to make that 0.25, so it's real fine on that first layer. I sliced it, and I think this is much better. This is what the first layer should be, because now it's actually drawn squares for each one of these. You can see each one is an individual square butted up against each other, and it did that on the outer ring as well. So you really got two lines that are actually being placed on the bed. So hopefully this is going to be better. So I ran that on the A1 Mini, and sure enough, it is better. But I still got issues. When I zoom in, you can see there are spots that the filament's not sticking. So even after an auto level, there's still something wrong with the Z offset. And I've cleaned this bed. This isn't finger marks or anything like that. There is something wrong with the way it's placing this filament. Now, there is no direct Z offset setting in the slicer. So I clicked on initial layer height just to see what the Bamboo Wiki would say about layer height. And it talked about how there's different layer height profiles and settings. And it goes into some detail for someone that's new to this and explains kind of what Z offset is, where the nozzle is going to be so the filament can come out. And then it talks about how their slicer really limits you to from 0.08 to 0.28. That's the range. And then there's different presets for those. But I wanted to change the Z offset. So I heard a trick that you could actually change the initial layer height to smaller. So I set it to 0.12, sliced that, and tested it to see if it would work. And the preview doesn't show anything different. So I'm not going to see anything here. i got to see it on the actual bed. So I sent it to the printer, and sure enough, it did make a difference. But it squished this filament. I mean, everything was there, but everything squished like a pancake. So this is the right direction, but the wrong solution. I did try the original bed. It still had stuff popping up. So I'm, I'm sticking with the cryo grip for this because I don't like the way this, this bed is working. So I went back to the slicer. And this is where I did a little research and found out that if you go into the machine code for the profile and you scroll almost all the way down, there's a section for the texture PEI plate, and they have a G-code setting, G29.1, which sets the Z offset to negative 0.02. Now, negative puts it closer to the bed, so I want to go closer, so I made it 0.08. And this is just kind of a guess based on everything I've been working with. And then I have to save this as a new name. I click on the Save symbol, and instead of copy here, I'm going to give it the name uh, Z minus 0, 0.8. That way I know it's 8.08 .08 offset for Z offset. So now I have a new profile to use, and I'm going to use this with all my other settings. Well, actually, I put the 0.12 back to 0.2, so I'm back to kind of where I started. And then once I slice that, I looked at the preview. Everything looked the same again. It's not showing Z offset, but look at this. Beautiful print. This looks just as good as the P1S, maybe even slightly better. And once I printed it, it came out awesome. Everything stuck. This thing built up. The slots looked good. There was less stringing than I was seeing on the P1S. And when I flipped it over, very smooth. Much smoother than I was seeing with the P1S and the black filament. That, that's actually a filament from Inland, which is a Micro Center. And if you compare the two, you can see that the A1 Mini is doing a much better job 
than the P1S on that top surface. So now I was ready to put clips in this thing and try it. So I just put a bunch of clips at locations. I didn't fill every slot on the outside for this project. So I'm just going to put LEDs at those spots. But in the center, I put every clip. And then once I had that done, I was ready to build a circuit. So I went back to Tinkercad and built this circuit with eight LEDs. And I wrote some code and then ran the simulation to make sure that everything was working. So it's going to scroll these LEDs in order. And here's the finished product. I built it on my round breadboard, 9-volt battery running the Arduino Nano. It's working great. So now I think I want to design my own circuit board that matches my breadboard so I can build permanent circuits because I can't find anything that matches it. That just gives me another reason to work with PCBWay.com. I love getting circuit boards from PCBWay.com. You can get 10 boards for 5 bucks plus shipping. It's one of the best deals out there. They also have low-cost assembly services. You just upload your Gerber files, go through all the features you want to set, different colors for the solder mask, silk screen, and then they'll fabricate your boards and send them back to you. Or you can have them assemble it. Give them a bill of materials, they'll track down the parts, or you can send them the parts and they'll assemble it for you. So if you're looking for a good electronics partner, in fact, a great electronics partner, check out PCBWay.com. I use them all the time. So with a few key settings and a bamboo slicer, including some G-code, I went from this to this. And I can see where this profile is going to be very handy for detailed work like this in the future. So now I know that I can make any shape that I want with Tinkercad and those clips and make my own breadboards. If this is something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below. I want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Without your support, I couldn't keep this channel going. So thank you. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.